Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 6th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. All signs pointed to it being a good day, so I was sure to get out early. And actually, there was quite a bit of sunshine in the morning, which was really nice for picking through the morning flight of the non-raptors. And there were raptors moving pretty early, too. And then as we got into the mid-morning, clouds rolled in and rain shut the countdown for about an hour and 15 minutes. Then it cleared back up. Then in the mid-afternoon, rain shut the flight down again for a very brief period. Then it cleared up a bit again. And then towards the end of the afternoon, the winds kind of died off. And at the very end, a lake breeze kicked in, a cold northerly wind, and some fog rolled in off of the lake. And the one interesting thing today was that the clouds and the rain were moving from south to north compared to the normal west to east weather pattern we would expect. We've been seeing some scarlet tanagers the past couple of days, and it's really a stunning bird to see fly by on a sunny morning. I was able to photograph quite a few warblers in flight today. Here we have a male American red start. On this warbler, we see a bright orange throat. This is a black Bernian warbler. This warbler is black and white because it's a black and white warbler. This warbler has a yellow breast with some streaking to it and a bit of orange to the face. This is a Cape May warbler. This warbler has a white throat, a black face mask, and some yellow highlights to the sides and rump. This is a yellow rumped warbler. And this warbler has some gray to the head, yellow underneath with a bit of streaking. This is a palm warbler. There were also quite a few Baltimore Orioles flying by and hanging out. They were really enjoying the grape jelly I put out for them. We had a lot of flyby individuals and flocks of this species. This is a blackbird where we see some white highlights to it and some yellowish or tan color to the back of the head. This is a male bobolink. We haven't been seeing many double-crested cormorants recently, so we thought their migration was winding down, but we had a few hundred today migrating in large groups. We had a really big push of migrating American goldfinches today, with over 1,200 counted. Today, the winds were moderate out of the east or southeast, and that's a headwind for the birds, and it tends to keep them very low, so we had really nice looks at a lot of sharp-shinned hawks today, and we had a good flight of them with more than 300 total. Here we have another sharp-shinned hawk. Notice the long tail with a squared-off tip because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. And notice that when they push their wrists forward, the head barely sticks out past that. So from a distance, it would almost look headless. Here we have a pretty flashy songbird. Overall, the body looks white, but we see some red coloration to the upper breast. We see a black head. We see a very large pinkish bill, and we see dark wings with some white highlights. This is a male rose-breasted grosbeak. And here's the female rose-breasted grosbeak, which isn't as flashy, but still has that huge bill. Some observers with sharp hearing were able to pick out the song of a golden-winged warbler, so we went to track it down, and it wasn't very cooperative staying deep in the brush, but I was able to obtain a few documentation shots, and this seems like it's a good spring for golden-winged warblers. This is the second one that we've had, and there's been a couple others in the county as well. Rain moved in and paused the count from around 9.45 till 11. Once we started seeing some blue on the horizon, we knew we'd be back in business soon. Here's a hawk that was getting chased away by the local adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have a hawk with a long tail. On this bird, we see a large head and we see brown teardrop streaking more concentrated on the upper breast. And the streaking does not extend all the way down onto the undertail coverts. So not a goss hawk. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here we have a raptor with a long tail and long thin wings and an owl-like facial disc. This is a juvenile northern harrier. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings and light coloration below. So a small light colored falcon is an American kestrel. And from the spotting to the underside, we know this is a male. But when the males have their tail completely folded, you don't see any of the orange on the tail. You're only seeing the outer tail feathers, which are banded. Here we have a small compact buteo with pointed wings and some brown streaking to the breast. This is a juvenile broad-winged hawk, and this was the best flight of broad wings we've had in a while, with some small kettles in the afternoon and more than 750 total broad wings for the day. 
Here's a bird which caused a bit of excitement as we tried to puzzle out the ID. Looking at the overall shape, this is a Budeo, and we see that it's completely dark underneath because this is a Dark Morph Budeo, which there's a couple of different options, and all of them are uncommon at this point in the season. Overall, looking at this, we do not see dark flight feathers to the wings, so that rolls out Swainson's Hawk, which would be one of the possible rarities. And we don't see a bold trailing edge to the wing, so we know that this bird is a juvenile. Looking at the top side of the wing, we see pale inner primaries, which is a typical sign for a juvenile beautio, so that supports the age. And looking at the tail, we do see some tail bands and perhaps a darker subterminal band, which is another field mark we can use. And in this shot of the bird going away, this gives us a really good sense of the shape of the bird. We can see it's kind of very long, skinny wings. And this bird isn't big and bulky like a red tail. So we've rolled out Dark Morph Swainson's hawk. We rolled out Dark Morph Red-Tailed hawk. It's not the right shape to be a Dark Morph Broad-Winged hawk. So that leaves us with Dark Morph Rough-Legged hawk, which is something we see quite a few of during the season but it's getting really late to see them at this point in May. So we may see one or two more rough legs for the season. I know Braddock Bay had one today also, but it's just getting late for rough legs. And anytime you're seeing a dark morph beautio, you want to take a really close look because there's numerous species that are possible and it's a tough identification challenge. Here we have a beautio with a belly band and dark patagial bars. So this is a red tailed hawk, but Almost all of the red-tailed hawks we're seeing at this point in the season that are migrating are juveniles. So to see an adult red-tailed hawk such as this bird, notice that dark trailing edge to the wings, and the tail would be reddish if it was in better light. To see an adult at this point in the season, it really catches your attention. And you have to wonder how far north are these birds going that they're waiting until early May to be heading up to their breeding grounds. And most of the adult red tails that we've been seeing migrating recently are the northern subspecies. And this bird probably is. It's hard to tell because the photo is a bit grainy, but it looks like the throat is mostly dark. It looks like the patagial bars are pretty large and it looks just heavily marked overall. So this bird's probably going very far north to nest and that could possibly explain why it's waited until early May to head north. Here's an osprey that migrated by packing a lunch, as we say, or in this case, more just carrying a small snack. And we'll end with this small raptor with pointed wings. So a small falcon with a lot of dark streaking underneath and a dark tail with some white bands to it. This is a merlin. As we got to the end of the day, the winds died off and the northerly lake breeze kicked in and brought a lot of fog with it. And it was cool watching a couple of bald eagles soar around as that fog rolled in. Taking a look at the eBird list for today, we had 95 species, which is the highest total so far this season. And pretty soon we'll hopefully get a few days with 100 or more species. Despite that huge list, I only had one new species for the season, which was indigo bunting, which brings us to a total of 171 species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 133 turkey vultures, 57 ospreys, 44 bald eagles, we had 13 northern harriers, 319 sharp-shinned hawks, and 6 cooper's hawks. For Budios, we had one red-shouldered hawk, 764 broad-winged hawks, 28 red-tailed hawks, and one rough-legged hawk. And for Falcons, we had 13 American kestrels, two merlins, and one peregrine falcon for a total of 1,382 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 3,420 and the season total to 81,678. Taking a look at the forecast, it's supposed to rain pretty much all night, so I don't know that there will be much songbird migration overnight, but maybe whatever was here will stay. The rain showers will trail off into the morning, then it will remain overcast with a high in the mid-50s. The winds are starting southwest and then shifting west at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so we'll probably start at the north lookout. 
But with those gloomy conditions, I don't know that Raptors will be moving particularly early, although it is a decent wind if it stays southwest for those morning hours. So maybe we'll be surprised. And then as the wind shifts more westerly and perhaps even a bit north of west later on, we may end up moving to the south lookout. So we'll just have to see how the conditions settle in. But overall, it's looking less favorable than it's been the last couple of days. But hey, with that little bit of southwest in the morning, maybe we'll get some action. For Thursday, it's looking cloudy with a high in the low to mid 50s and north northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So we'll be at the south lookout and I would only expect light migration. And for Friday, they're calling for cloudy skies with occasional light rain, a high of 52 and north winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So pretty similar. Another south lookout day. Expect light migration. All right. Today turned out to be a great day of birding for non-raptors and raptors alike. And it looks like the next few days are going to be a bit slower. But as we come into the weekend and early next week, it's going to be warmer temperatures and at least a bit of sunshine. So maybe we'll get some action then. But the next few days could be a little bit slow. But hope to see you out soon at Derby Hill. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.